What's going on guys, it's ETA Prime back here again. Today I want to show you the coolest handheld that I've ever messed around with. Now this is actually my new favorite handheld. This is the Game Shell by Clockwork Pi. I guess it was about 8 months to a year ago they had an Indiegogo campaign. And I backed it. I was actually the super backer because I had more referrals than anybody. They're going to be sending me 3 more of these and I will be giving them away on the channel. So stay tuned for that. So as you can see, this is a Game Boy looking device. This is completely modular and a do-it-yourself kit. Everything needs to be put together and it's fairly easy to do. I have recorded a video and I will be uploading it later this week. Initially, I was going to upload that as my first video on the Game Shell, but I figured I'd go ahead and show you guys because I'm super excited about this. The Game Shell is powered by an all-winner R16J CPU at 1 GHz. It also has a Mali 400 GPU and 512 megabytes of RAM. So on the very top here, we have our power button, micro USB in to charge the unit, and a 3.5 millimeter audio jack. If we take a look at the front here, we have four action buttons. We also have start, select, menu, shift, and a D-pad. I know some of you guys always want more buttons, so they do offer another expansion. This will allow us to add what they call a light key for five more action buttons on the very back. It does make it a little bulkier, but if you want more buttons, this is what you're going to have to do. I'm totally fine without it. I will make a video showing it off in the future, but for now, I just wanted to mess around with the game shell like it is. This is the little PCB that comes with it for five extra buttons on the back. The buttons feel great as long as you do it correctly. Now the top are rubber, these here are plastic inserts. The little knobs on the side only hold the case together. These aren't buttons or little potentiometers. As of making this video, they are completely sold out, but I have been informed within the next month and a half to two months, they will have more stock to sell to the public. The only way to get your hands on one right now at this moment was to be an Indiegogo backer. When they go on sale, I will be putting a link in the description. If you know where to get one right now, let me know in the comments below because I'd actually buy another one for the giveaway. Like I mentioned, I will have three more coming to me very shortly. I'm going to do a dedicated video on giving those three away. So basically, we have a little Linux machine here that's able to run retro games. Even though we only have 512 megabytes of RAM, this thing will still play thousands and thousands of retro games. It also has dual stereo speakers in the very front, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, this is the Clockwork OS that I'm booting up, and this is one of the reasons I really, really love this unit. Clockwork OS is so simple to use, and it looks beautiful, it's very minimalistic. Clockwork Pi also has a full forum that you can go and browse, there's a lot of stuff going on over there right now, a lot of people have just got a hold of their game shell, and development is full steam ahead. There are guys working on all kinds of stuff for this little unit. So this is going to be my first video on the game shell. I will be putting out a few more this week. If you guys want to see anything else running on this unit, let me know in the comments below. This is kind of just an overview and my initial thoughts. I also want to show you guys some gameplay here because that's one of the main reasons you're going to get one of these. Now, I've had family in town for a week. They're going to be here for another week. I'm trying my hardest to put these videos out. I don't have much extra time. But the time I have spent with this unit is very enjoyable. Like I mentioned at the very beginning, this is my favorite handheld as of right now. I know there's other handhelds out there that run Android that can run more games than this, but I'm not into those kind of games. I'm into retro games, and this does them really, really well. First up, I'm just going to give you a quick overview of the Clockwork OS. We're going to go into settings. As you can see, we have airplane mode, power options. I have mine set to performance. You can go to power saver if you want. We do have Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. And these menus here are beautiful. This is one of the reasons I love Clockwork OS. As you can see, it is very minimalistic. It feels great. It looks awesome. And the screen is actually very, very vivid. Now, viewing angles are really great. It's not IPS, it's only 320 by 240. It's a 2.8 inch display, but it looks great on this handheld. There's also an online updater. If there's any updates, you can just go there. It's fully open source, so if you wanna modify anything at all, you can do that and re-upload it somewhere if you'd like to. You can also change the button configuration. Now, straight out of the box, it feels a little weird because I'm used to RetroPie. I haven't messed with it, I'm just going to leave it like it is and see if I can get used to it. If not, I can always change it in this menu. 
Now, here we have the retro games. As of making this video, if you're not using RetroArch, we only have three selections on the main menu here. MAME, Game Boy Advanced, and NES. But if you go over to the Clockwork Pi forum, there's a full guide on how to add more. And somebody's also come up with icon packs that match. Another thing we can look for in the future are images or custom images for the game shell itself. And I might just create one and add as many emulators to the front as I can. It will contain no ROMs at all, but it's all going to be set up for you. Here we have NES running Adventure Island 3, one of my favorite games. The screen is a lot more vibrant than it is picking up with my camera. Um, it's really hard to capture a screen like this, but it looks great in real life. And the viewing angles are really good, but you're not going to be sitting off to the side with something like this. You're going to have it head on, and that's the way it's meant to be played. Another thing to note, the sound is really good with this unit. Now, I've messed around with a lot of handhelds. If you watch my channel at all, you know I deal with a lot of different custom handhelds. The sound on this is better than any other handheld that I've ever messed around with. And to exit, all you have to do is press the menu button or you can set it up to exit with start and select. That's going to bring us back into the Clockwork Pi operating system. So you can also download RetroArch here. I have it installed on the main menu. I'm going to go ahead and open it up. I have switched the theme to the XMB theme. Some people might not like the look of this, but I love the way it feels on this little unit. Like I said, there are guides on adding all of these emulators to your main menu. So after you get everything set up, or maybe another image will be released, you won't even have to open up RetroArch unless you want to. From here, I've installed some Sega Genesis games, some TurboGrafx-16 games, and some Neo Geo stuff. We're going to go into TurboGrafx-16 and start Splatterhouse. If you've ever messed around with RetroArch, you know that there are a bunch of different cores for different emulators. I've been messing around trying to find out which one is the best for this system here. Um, with Sega or Genesis, I use Pico Drive. Works pretty well. I still get a couple sound glitches here and there. But the unit itself hasn't been out long, and I know the developers are going to be working on optimizations. If the developers aren't working on it, I know the community will. I was actually surprised when I went over to the forum to see how many people are developing things for the game shell already. I really, really hope that this scene blows up with the game shell and we get all kinds of stuff running on this. Final emulator I'm going to be testing in this video is Neo Geo using Final Burn Alpha. We're going to be testing out Metal Slug 4, my favorite Metal Slug game. The game feels really good. I've played this on a lot of different systems and it feels just like it does on the Raspberry Pi. Guys, let me know what cores and games you wanna see running on the game shell. I will make more videos. Now this does come pre-installed with Cave Store and it runs amazingly. It also comes pre-installed with Free Doom. You can also add the full version of Doom as long as you own it. There's also an option for Tiny Cloud. It just shows you the IP you need to use when you're transferring your ROMs from your Mac, Windows, or Linux machine to the game shell. It's really easy to set up and do. So now I want to go ahead and do a little bit of a teardown. I'm just going to shut the unit off and I'm going to show you what's inside here. It's so easy to put together. The instructions they send you are easy enough for a six-year-old to do. We're going to pull these off. This holds the top of the shell together. Then we'll pull the faceplate off. And inside of here, we have little modular sections that can be installed individually. And over time, it's possible that the guys from Clockwork Pi could offer upgrades like a CPU or RAM upgrade board or even a better IPS display. So that was the speaker section. Now we're going to go with the controller board or what they call the keyboard. 
Now inside of here, there is another PCB. I had to put all of this together, it just snaps in there, there are no screws whatsoever. One of the coolest designs that I've ever seen in my life. Pop it off, there's our rubber, conductive pads, and here's the controller board for the keyboard or the joypad. It's so freaking neat how they put all this together. Next up, we'll go ahead and pull the screen off. Now there's a ribbon cable, you need to be careful with this. I'm not even sure if I can get parts for this yet. I do not want to hurt this. I'll just pop the main board section up. I need to unplug my speaker wire, my battery wire, and over on the other side I still have the joypad wire connected in here. Now we can just unplug the screen itself. And this is the main board. This is where all the action happens. We'll just pop this right out. And it would be really easy for them to offer upgrades. As you can see, we have the RJ16 all winter CPU on there, SD card. We also have our Bluetooth and Wi Fi module soldered directly to the board. I really tried not to geek out about this whole setup here, but I, I just can't help myself. This combines everything I love, single board computers, wires, and retro gaming, all in an easy to use, easy to put together package. I have no idea how long the battery lasts because I haven't been able to use it that long, but this is a 3.7 volt, 1050 milliamp hour battery. I'd put it in the one and a half hour to three hour range, depending on what you're doing with the unit itself. I also got the light key module kit. This is the back cover for the light key module to connect to. Here is the light key module itself and the PCB. So I can add five buttons on the very back, but it will add a little extra bulk to the whole unit. This is gonna give us you know, trigger buttons and extra functionality for emulators we don't already have enough buttons for. So overall, I haven't had this much fun with a do-it-yourself project in a very long time. I know that the Odroid Go was out. It's an awesome little unit, but this thing is so much more than the Odroid Go. Of course, it's going to cost more than the Go itself. The only issue I'm seeing here is the availability of these units. If they can start selling them on Amazon, this whole scene would just blow up. I mean, there's a lot of people that want to get their hands on one of these right now. And like I said, I do have three coming my way. They will be given away on my channel. So go ahead and subscribe. Hit that notification bell so you know when I upload my next video. And let me know what you want to see next on this unit. I do have a full build video coming up, but I also need some ideas for testing. I'm going to leave some links in the description to the Clockwork Pi website, their forum, and even their Indiegogo because you never know if you can buy them after the fact. Maybe they're just waiting on more to be produced. I'm not even sure. Either way, really appreciate you guys watching. If you could, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and like always, thanks for watching.